work, we're going to play with the development of the limb buds coming out from the core, how they grow in the, in the embryo, the reason that we do this, just in case, you know, there's a question about it, the reason that we do it is that we are following ourselves back in time to when we were at a state of near undifferentiation, which means awareness was pretty darn crystal clear, right? Early, early, undifferentiated, vast awareness. Island of this, becoming a little bit of a little shape, and then now it's going to differentiate more, it's going to grow these things. So back in time, and in terms of structure, we're also going to the subtlest layers of structure. So it's very yogic in that way. We're following where we are back to the source in more than one way. And then in terms of yoga asana and um, creating more comfort in body and mind, we're also looking at the prana flows. Because it's the prana flow that created the movement in the first place. And the prana flow, this is the critical part, the prana flow that created the growth of the limb buds in the first place is still present. And by finding and following that flow, we increase our health in the joints and all of that stuff. So you want to thank shoulder therapeutics, for example. You want to think, you want to go right under it immediately. You have the skill to do it. This is what you want to do. You want to go to the embryological spiral, which is the natural movement of, of prana in the joint. You want to see where that's happening or not happening. And then you want to use all of your other tools as well, all the structural stuff and you know everything. But you want to see, is, is it integrated? Is that happening there or not? So that's the reason that we do it. Questions about that? The upper limbs develop just a few days before the lower limbs. I think that's kind of fun. Yeah. Who knows? But anyway, like a few days is a long time. Right. And we learn to use our push. And we do because when we're out, right, when we're out in our first few months of life, we're working the we're working yeah. the upper slopes, yeah. right? Yeah. Almost like a tadpole. Do they do that? They have first the front. Yeah. Uh -huh. Before legs, right? Yeah. yeah. Flippers before legs. Yeah. I mean, yeah. even evolutionarily, yeah. Flippers came before legs. Okay, so we're still just these evolutionary blurs. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Here I go, <laughs> following the following. The, Path. All right, so they, they do this. Now, they're coming from all the way in the center. So remember what they're developing from? Our, our limbs are developing from mesoderm. Mesoderm is the stuff that will be all of the connective tissue of your body. So when we start thinking fascia, we're mesoderm, right? These limbs, bones, and muscle are developing from mesoderm, right? So we're developing this, these little limbs. They're coming from that very early weave of fluid, undifferentiated sorts of cells that are saying, like, I could do almost anything right now, but, oh, I'm going to be a limb bug. Okay, I'm going that way, right? But there's something else really, really super fascinating to me about this, and that is, what is the intelligence that drives this? We don't know. We obviously don't know. But what we do know is that at the layer of, of manifestation, space is the most subtle of the elements, and that information is contained in the space. All of the information manifestation is, is in the space, and then it keeps moving through. So. In our little bodies, with our little limb buds starting to grow, it's not just the I me, I'm a limb bud, I'm growing, right? But it is that as this limb bud starts to 
get some idea somewhere. The ectoderm, which is the external wrapping of the embryo at this point, the ectoderm, for some reason, starts to pull away from the mesoderm and create space. And then the mesoderm says, oh, here we go starts to grow in and fill the space, and then more space comes, and it goes again, and more space comes, and it goes again. So we have this tissue of us growing into space. So we're, we're not only like moving out from the source, we're being drawn out from the source. So in between those layers is joy. Oh, and I think that is absolutely true, that the space, you know, space is the Ananda Maya Kosha. There is, there is joy in it, you know? That makes sense. Like, right, it makes sense, if it makes sense. <laughs> but if it doesn't make sense, we have the maps <laughs> to, you know, to continue to explore and to say, well, maybe somebody said that. Darby, I want to go from A to Z. I want to go. That Okay, so so the, there's something of the mind of like, what's this little embryo? Is this like the Big Bang? You know, is this is this like the microcosm and the the macrocosm, right? The macro and the micro. We're the micro. We have our own little microcosmic event of when the sperm met the egg. And did you all see on the Facebook page? Yes. The sperm, when the sperm comes in to the egg, there's an immediate reaction of the, the zinc and the, it's called the zona pellucida. Pellucida, thank you. The zona pellucida, which has um, zinc in it. When the sperm comes in, the zona pellucida lights up. It goes, pshh. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. It's a smart. It's, a, it's real. You see the pictures, right? And they've known about this a long time because they call it the zona pellucida. Right? But now they've seen the pictures of it. It's like, yeah. what instinct knew that? Somebody knew that. They hadn't seen it because they didn't, you know? But now they know. They, they need it right. Is that crazy? It's crazy. So that's that's a little big thing, kind of like, oh yeah, <laughs> right. And then and then the whole thing starts to happen. All right. So the embryological spirals. You ready? You have to do it with me. You have to become like this tiny little no limbs. So you're here. Tiny little no limbs. Oh, and your shoulder blades are kind of on your back. And you're a little round. So you have no limbs. Are you, you good with that? You got your shoulder blades square, not square, but snug on your back. Now you're going to, first we're just going to do this together, then I'm also going to show it to you, then, we're going, then I'm going to show you how to learn it through touch. So don't worry, take your time. I just want you to go through it the first time with me. Your shoulder blades are pretty snug on your back. As your buds begin to grow, they just start to slide around the sides of your body a little bit toward the front. They just slide around the sides of your body a little bit toward the front. And then up at the top shoulder, they start to spin forward and internal rotation. By now, they're coming way toward the front sides of your body, and right at the bottom of where your curved deltoid muscle is, a spiral starts to roll into an external rotation, and the arms come out. Pretty good first try, guys. All right, let me show you, watch me. The shoulder blade is snug on the back. Watch what I'm gonna draw. It's stabilized back there. There's nothing out here. 
as it, the limb is only as far as the place that we're talking about, okay? It's snug on your back. A wrapping starts to bring the arm around forward, and this is an internal rotation coming down around about as far as the lower deltoid. At that point, the rotation starts to spin out, and this is all growing out and to the end. Other side. Do with me, feel it on yourself. So that it goes in and it's snugged up. More, more back than up. And then it starts to come forward and the shoulder blade is sliding on the side of your body there. So it's traveling towards your front body. It comes from your back body to your front body. That's an actual journey, back body to front body. And then it rolls forward on the deltoid. And then it shifts direction and it starts coming out and it stays in that same organization all the way. 